Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our August Breakfast Club. We were just finishing uh, setting up a couple things. I feel like it's been, what, six or seven weeks since we were all together, and it is um, just getting back into that whole groove. So let's see. Good morning, Irene. Hi, Kelly. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Patsy. Hello, Terry in Hanford. Hello, uh, Diana. Oh, Karen, Terry, and Diana all together in the Ridgecrest group. Hello, Margie. Hello, McAdoo. Hi, Colleen. Let's see. Oh, good morning, Heather in Colorado. Hi, Carol. Hi, Cranstons. Hi, Pat. Uh, let's see. Hello, Susan. Back from Australia. My world traveler on the cruise with us. And then on to um, Australia. I think you were in Thailand, too. Linda Sue. Hello, Emma. Good morning, Gloria and Amira. Hi, Rose. Good morning, Joy over in Taft. So we have um, a fun morning for you. Uh, let's see. Hello, Tracy. We have a really big show and tell today. I'm going to share a few pictures, not even close to everything we took from the cruise. Um, and then we had a fantastic turnout for show and tell. Um, some of the regulars <coughs> um, didn't send in a picture, but that's okay. Um, I'm just teasing you guys. Um, but we have a lot of great show and tells um, and all of that good stuff. So those of you that are new to our page, to Thimbletown, to Breakfast Club, welcome. We're glad you're here. As a reminder, anybody can send in a photo to photos at thimbletown.com and you will be included in our slideshow whether you purchase uh, the Breakfast Club kit or not. The live is open to everybody to watch in and participate in. Um, so we are glad that you are all here spending part of your um, Saturday morning with us. Good morning, Raquel. Um, all right, so we're gonna just dive right into our slideshow for August and show you everything that everybody has been working on. I am going to start with a few uh, pictures from the quilting cruise. Uh, so there is, uh, we did two back to back to Alaska. So there's a, the first group picture. We worked on some amazing um, quilts. Um, Patsy designed three quilts in Quiltster. So these were exclusive patterns um, and kits to uh, the cruise. There is Glenn and Dinah and Sue with Patsy. There are two of our Oregon girls. That's Julie and Marsha. They've been coming down for our retreats in Bakersfield for a long time now. Uh, there is one of our six pack. There's Nancy over. She's in San Luis. Uh, there is Patsy with Gail and Joanne. Uh, they are sisters. Joanne is in Colorado. Uh, Gail is up in Fresno. Here is another group. So we had Ellie, Margie. Oh, the other name is right in the top of my head, but it'll come to me. Um, oh, I feel terrible, but it'll pop in my head. I can see it, it's the tip of my tongue. There is part of our uh, six pack. Uh, so that's um, Nancy, Cindy, and Tommy with Patsy. There I am with the whole six pack. Uh, the funny part is, so the front three are uh, who did um, the actual sewing. The back three calls themselves the husbands. So it was really nice to actually get to see the whole six pack together. Uh, there is Debbie and Glenn. There is part of our second group. There is Susan and um, Karen up in Oregon. Um, and then Melanie, who used to live here, uh, who has now moved to Oregon, so she now has new Oregon friends. They're all uh, actually fairly close together, so I'm glad there's some new sewing groups. There is Kitty and Alma. There is uh, Joanne again with Melanie. There is uh, Jeremy and I with Amy and Jenny. That is at one of the waterfalls at Minden, 
Mendenhall Glacier. That is Jeremy and I in, uh, what town is that? Oh, that is Juno. And then very happy puppies to get picked up from being boarded for two weeks. And then we'll move on. So Terry up in Hanford, she did these really cute uh, reading pillows. These are always, always great uh, gifts. She finished up a Bargello. Another project, I don't remember in her email which that one was. This was a guild project that they were working on or a guild retreat. And then this project, if I remember correctly, was a guild challenge. It said to use something old. So if I remember the email she sent me correctly, that fabric in the middle is about 70 years old that she used for the middle of those placemats. So I think that's pretty cool. Joy uh, took and quilted up one of our panels, our beach dream panels. She also did the Kimberbell bunting. Uh, this was a panel that we've had, so she said she enjoyed doing that and doing the technique to put the, um, the rope through them to hang them. She did these bibs for um, a special needs family member. So these are just oversized bibs, which as she said, are really great for um, having to eat, to wipe up messes, all of that good stuff. I actually had a customer bring me one of these very similar. Um, she said I should use it when I drive back and forth and eat in the car so I don't spill on myself. There is the bib on. So as you can see, I think it's a great project that can be used for any age. I think it would be, we all could use a bib sometimes. Um, she decided to put it on after uh, using the ironing board, which I think is great for her mannequin. And then there is um, another one with robots on it. She also wrapped up one of our previous breakfast clubs, which was the, I always get this backwards, the makeup roll up. I know several people used it for other things like their hand embroidery, etc. There's the inside. So she got that wrapped up. She wrapped up another previous breakfast club, which was our drying mat and our embellished tea towel. That was the back side of it. Um, and she also wrapped up another previous breakfast club, which was um, our carrot wall hanging. There's a better picture of it. She made extra carrots for that. Still one of my favorite projects. Tracy up in Oregon uh, finished uh, her Yard of Snowmen and Border Table Runner. Great job on that, Tracy. Christy's been busy uh, taking every um, advantage of the end of summer vacation before school started back this week. Um, so she did, um, that's a knot bag from our previous breakfast club. She also did another one in uh, Minnie Mouse fabric. So I love seeing um, our projects be used more than once. This was uh, last year's pillow of the month, so she got that one done. She got this fun uh, red, white, and blue project wrapped up. She wrapped up her uh, haunted uh, wonky houses uh, from Fabric Confetti and Bruce Allen Designs. This has been, uh, a, continues to be a very popular kit that we have. Um, Margie, uh, she did our make and take pin cushion. So we did that, um, in person. However, um, on one of our last sales that we did, um, we had some leftover. So whoever did in the comments, we sent them out. So I'm glad to see that got finished up. Glad you liked that little tutorial. Um, she finished up her makeup roll up. There is her inside. So that had, um, three different zippers. It had different pockets. Um, Sharon over in Barstow embroidered and quilted up a um, banner for her church. She did these great Christmas pillows. These are just small decorative uh, holiday pillows. And I think we're all starting to fill that Christmas season. We want the heat to be over. So she did this really cute reindeer. And then our new pattern, uh, Just Chill, once again, from Fabric Confetti and Bruce Allen Designs, she took the pillow and uh, just trimmed it, the pillow project, and trimmed it down into just a door hanging or a wall hanging. Um, so it's probably about 12 by, I don't know, 14 or 15. So just a really cute size there. 
didn't need it as a pillow. Cindy over in San Luis has been busy. She wrapped up this cute bag and this quilt. So I was laughing because I was trying to figure out how big this was and I realized Cindy's probably holding it up so it's not that huge. Um, no, I'm just teasing you, Cindy. So I can't quite determine what the size of that project is. I originally thought of it as a table topper, um, but really fun um, uh, strip piece stars there. She finished up another uh, project. She also got one of our make and take pin cushions in the mail, so she got that done. I like the little cute way she tied that uh, center button on. She did a couple, she did another bag. There's a knot bag from Breakfast Club. And then to the left are some of the rope bowls. She's been making lots of those. These look like they are the uh, bowl cozies. Diana over in Ridgecrest, really, really cute sunflower project. Looks like she added some embroidery there also. Uh, that is one of our uh, table toppers of the month. We still have a few of these kits available. And then we have, um, she did this pumpkin um, wall hanging. She is using her embroidery machine and she is learning how to use different quilting stitches um, built in. So that pumpkin has, um, in each of the sections, has different um, embroidery quilting patterns on it. So it's a great uh, size project to continue to learn how to use her machine. Karen did this quick crazy. So we showed this recently um, on a Tipsy Tuesday. She finished this one up, so that looks great. Um, and then she quilted it herself. I believe this came out of a long arm class that she is taking. So um, I'm not sure how well it shows, but when I blow, uh, blew it up, it is fantastic. So she did all of the quilting herself. Then she finished up a bag we showed on Tipsy Tuesday and then a couple of other zipper bags in the back. Gloria finished up, Gloria in New York, she finished up a Breakfast Club. So that was the traveling roll up checkerboard. Uh, Sherry, my mom has been busy on Halloween. She swears she's almost done with Halloween and she's not making any more. And then she shows us another project. So that was a Kimberbell Minch pillow, uh, one of their older patterns. And then she always turns these into wall hangings instead of bench pillows. She did the trick or treat smell my feet tea towel. Uh, she also finished up her drying mat and her um, traveling checkerboard. And then this is the spiky table runner. We did this as a virtual class um, on Zoom. We did this as an in-person. Uh, so she got that project finished up. Looks great. That's my, uh, that's the fall version of that. She also finished up the bite-sized blocks that we showed um, several weeks ago um, on a Tipsy Tuesday. And then on the sunflower, she finished up that one. That is also, those are 12 inch blocks. So great just for the center of a table to hang on um, a door or a, a wall space. Um, fun, quick, um, smaller projects, which everybody is really seeming to love. Tommy finished up a UFO. Um, it's quilted and bound. Nice job, Tommy. We really like this one. Emma, she's been busy, of course, making bags. What else? So I think this one, if I remember, is a backpack. Um, and there's another, I wanna say that one's either a bag or a lunch pail, but very cute. There is turtles in a bag. Really fun black, white, and red uh, tote bag there. Uh, lots of zippers. There's another one in a fun paisley. And then Emma, you're gonna have to message me later because I have to have this embroidery design. It says, let me pour you a tall glass of get over it. Oh, and here's a straw so you can suck it up. I have to have that. I think we should wear it on a shirt, but if you'll uh, message me, Emma, where that design came from, that's a really fun one. So cute on a tea towel there. Gloria up in Martinez, she did our knot bag and then she did another one all in tropical, um, Prince uh, Flamingo, she just went on a trip to Florida, so I'm sure she made it for there. 
This is a beach bag she made. So it's got, looks like it's got some uh, mesh on that. So that was a uh, Florida beach bag. There's the front and there is the inside of it. She did her Kimberbell uh, digital dealer exclusive. So the 31. And then she did these really cute um, flamingos for her one of her shirts that she wore on her Florida trip. And that there will wrap up our um, uh, show and tell for August. So great job, everybody. Um, we always, always love to see um, the projects that you do, it does encourage everybody to do some other things. So Marissa, why don't you put that graphic up that we've been dreading all day. So this is 127 days until Christmas. So it's hard to believe that um, we only have 127 days. So yesterday, I don't remember who said it to me. I think it started with Amy and she's like, you know, there's only 128 days till Christmas. Of course, we were working on some Christmas things. And then Debbie comes in and tells me how many days until Halloween, how many days until Christmas, how many Saturdays left. So she had it all down, but we didn't get all of that into a graphic, but it, I really just cannot believe um, Christmas is already here. I just don't know where 2022 is gone. Um, I forgot to mention my new shirt. So this is my shirt from Alaska. Um, in Alaska, they have batiks that are not available outside of Alaska. So Hoffman, um, I'm not sure if anybody else does it, but I know for sure Hoffman, um, they create um, an exclusive batik line that only quilt shops in Alaska can purchase. Um, and so this one has all of the octopi on it. So, um, it seemed to be the, uh, theme. We bought several things that had octopus on them. And then I got this hour. So of course Irene whipped me up a shirt and I am thrilled with it. So, uh, we definitely, as a reminder, we have to get started on our Christmas project. So we have a few Christmas things to show you today. Now, this is just the panel. Um, because number one, we have a very limited amount of kits for these. Um, with that being said, there really wasn't a point. I didn't have any use for, um, Dr. Seuss. So I haven't quilted this up, but this is a tree skirt. So that it is a full, um, I believe it's 45. So it is printed with the tree skirt. It actually has the lines there for you to cut. Um, in the kit, you will get the pattern on it, how to put it together. And then it has the panel, it has the backing, and then it has the binding. So in the binding, there is enough in there because you will have to do that binding on the bias uh, because of the circle. So this is a really quick project that you can do. You can quilt it, you can just cross hatch quilt it, you can straight line quilt it. Um, Marissa says she wanted one, she goes, but will you quilt it for me? So um, very easy, throw in a piece of batting, quilt it, cut it out, and then throw that binding on it, and then you have a tree skirt. To go with your tree skirt, we have a Dr. Seuss advent calendar. So on that advent calendar, um, in here is this panel. Now, once again, we just got these in, so I did not have time to get it quilted and finished. So it is a panel, and then on the other side of the panel, you will find all of the ornaments. Okay, so the ornaments are double-sided. So the ornaments are double-sided, um, obviously one through 25, I guess, or 24. Do advent calendars go to 24 or 25? That will be the question of the day. 24. So there are all of your ornaments. In the kit, you have your binding, your backing, uh, the panel, for the, the Grinch Christmas tree where you can hang all of your ornaments on. And then you also have um, instructions. So everything is in there. You just need to really quickly just quilt it. Once again, you can quilt it. Those of you that are using your embroidery machines to quilt, this is a great size project to use those clear blue tiles or any of the other techniques that we've shared in our Mystery Monday 
um, and things like that for adding some quick quilting. You can cross hatch it, you can straight line it, you can send it to your long armor, but it is one of those projects that does not take a lot of time. And uh, the Dr. Seuss and Grinch Christmas is always um, really popular. So you'll have everything. Once these are gone, they're gone. We cannot reorder them. Christmas fabric is typically a one-time run. So if you want them, do not uh, do it. So Nancy's asking, how do the ornaments stick on? I don't know, because I didn't make it yet. I would assume you could probably, you could probably pin them on. Um, I don't really know. I'd use buttons and ribbon. Oh, Marissa says she would use buttons and ribbons. Oh, that'd be really cute. So you could put buttons all over the tree there, um, and then you can just add some ribbon to it and hang them from the buttons. So that would be our solution is just get some colored buttons um, and they'll just look like additional Christmas lights or Christmas bulbs on there. Put a little ribbon on and hang them there. Um, the instructions will obviously tell you what their suggestion is. Um, I just never got to that point. I got it out, pressed, and on the wall to share with you. Once again, because of the limited nature of this, we didn't take one and use it for a sample. Um, it's not off of the bolt yardage. We bought them directly as kits. So we don't have the extra. Normally when we make kits, we always add one or two um, in yardage so that we can do our samples. But this is such a, a niche one, we decided not to do the samples. But they are there and adorable. So um, when they're gone, they're gone. There's no more uh, Dr. Seuss Christmas. Um, for those of you that loved Hula Pink, we do have in Tiny Beast Fat Quarter Bundles. I think I shared these on a sale recently. And then we have yardage um, from Tiny Beast. So you guys can get on and get that. That always makes great bags and some things like that. We have uh, some projects in our upcoming Tipsy Tuesday. Um, I'll actually be using some of that fabric for them. So you guys will watch for that. Um, getting back to Christmas, um, you guys remember, what was the name of that, um, those guys, Marissa? Um, anyways, we had the animals, we had the cats and the dogs, and I, for the life of me, I'm going blank on what the name of it was, but this is called uh, the Christmas Squad. So it has all of the really, really fun um, so it has all the really fun. We've got the reindeer. I think that's either a hedgehog or a porcupine. That's a fox. That's a polar bear. So Christmas squad. But to go with Christmas squad, you have also the larger print of that. Okay. So you have the larger print of Christmas squad. And then the support on this, I'm, I absolutely love Christmas sweaters. And... Christmas mittens. So I think those are really, really fun projects. So Christmas Squad might be also one of my favorite things this year for Christmas because I think those animals are so um, adorable. Marissa, which way am I going for here? Because I can't really, still on this one. Okay, so we have a new project. It is a five yard quilt. Um, and it is going to, we're going to continue, uh, to do some other really fun kits. This is, um, one that's done out of coffee. So five yards, that includes your binding on this. Um, you guys will get a whole kit and then there is a pattern for that. So we did this one out of the coffee. It is fun, fantastic, easy. We will be demoing this block also on an upcoming Tipsy Tuesday, just so you guys just see how quick and easy that is to do. So that is the five yard quilt and I can't remember what this is called on the website, but as a reminder, Marissa does a uh, breakfast club tab and in there is everything that we'll show you guys on breakfast club. You guys can go there and you can scroll through and then see all of the fun new stuff. So once again, that has everything except the backing in it for you to make, um, and that does also include uh, binding. We showed, did we show it on Tipsy Tuesday? We showed it on something, I think on Tipsy Tuesday, Lazy Daisy. This has been one of those patterns for us that has been around for a long time. Um, sewn 
<clears throat> so sewn into the fabric is the designer and she's in Wyoming now. She used to live over at the coast, but this pattern is just fast and easy. You don't need any special ruler. There's a full size template in there uh, to cut out um, your wedges. There's no binding to put on it because the project is enveloped. We also did digitize the center circle. So anybody that has an embroidery machine, you just have to let us know and we'll send you um, the circle in whichever machine format that you have. Um, and we will be able to, uh, so that you can do the circle. So you would either, you know, zigzag it on, blanket stitch it on, or we did digitize it as um, an embroidered circle. So those kits have everything in there except uh, the backing um, on there. Really fun Halloween. This has been um, quite the topic of conversation between all of us at the shop because this Halloween line is kind of split. It kind of half of it has one theme and half of it has another theme, but it was all one collection from the designer. So when we were talking again about it yesterday, Marissa's like, I think that she just threw everything in there about Halloween that she loved and made it one line. So an example would be just really fun haunted houses. It's got the cat and the bat and the stars, um, all of that really good stuff. We've got really cute, um, you know, ghosts and pumpkins. So um, once again, just kind of fun, whimsical. And then you start to get into the bones and you get into the rib cages or you get into which is still one of my favorites um is the the cats are they cute or are they scary they're kind of in between so it's been really fun with this halloween line i love these bats um because the bats the way that she designed them and had them printed um make it look like houndstooth so a really fun halloween line for you guys so that is available as yardage and then we did do Lazy Daisy. Currently, we have it available in Halloween. And then we did a naughty or nice uh, table runner. We will do um, some other projects um, for Lazy Daisy for some of the other seasons coming up. Once again, it is a project that you can make in an afternoon. Um, no binding, you're gonna envelope it and top stitch it so you don't have to worry about any kind of binding on there. It's easy to go. We did should we show them the new table runner? So you guys know that we do the um, table topper of the month. This is called Sewing Days. This is from Riley Blake. Now this sample we did not do yet. Um, so this one is, we have everything here obviously for you. We just didn't do the sample. So we showed you guys the picture. So on here, you've got the dress form, the pin cushion, the buttons, uh, the sewing machine. One of the blocks looks like pattern pieces. Um, this is the first time we had a gray box. Um, oh, we had a gray box last year. This is the first one this year. Once again, these Riley Blake boxes are magnetized. They have one of the basic prints on the inside. You do get a full color pattern along with everything that you need to make the project except for the backing. So this one was the one that um, a lot of you had been waiting for. So that is called Sewing Days and it is in stock and ready for you guys now. Um, in case you guys didn't see us on um, Mystery Monday. So we do have a Mystery Monday embroidery group and then we have a, a Tipsy Tuesday uh, group. We did this really fun table topper here, uh, or wall hanging, not table topper. So this is, um, I just need to chill. Um, I did this and I made a mistake. So um, I quilted the borders incorrectly, so I had to cut them off and restart the borders. Um, I'll finish that up this weekend. So this table runner has, obviously is the CD from Fabric Confetti and Bruce Allen Designs. Then we have a complete kit for you. And then if you saw in our show and tell, Sharon made a wall hanging. This is the pillow project. Um, she took this project and turned it into a wall hanging. I always find it really um, great when you take a project and suit it to what your needs are. I think those snowmen on there, the um, original snowman here, the before he's melted, 
or even this one. I think this would be really cute on um, a tea towel because we always like to do some embellishments and tea towels around the house. So there's lots of things you guys can do with those snowmen. So once again, I think everybody did a fantastic job uh, sitting in their show and tell. Um, we have lots of fun things. Christmas um, is uh, right around the corner as we showed you. Just a mere 127 days away. Actually, that's a pretty scary to think that it is that close. Uh, we are going to go in to our project. Our project this month was inspired a little bit by multiple things we can that we do. Um, one of the things that inspired us is we like to do smaller like throw pillows. Um, and then we like to do smaller uh, wall hangings or like that you could put on the door. And an example would be like the bitty blocks. You saw these in the show and tell. So these are some kits um, that we did from a designer. Just really fun 12 inch uh, blocks. What I have found is that some of you like to do little wall hangings and then some of you guys like to do pillows. Um, an example would be on our Riley Blake pillow of the month last year, um, about half of you made them into pillows. So you saw um, Chrissy McAdoo had an apple one done and it was the pillow. Then there's a lot of people that have taken those um, and made them into wall hangings. Another example, my mom showed a bench pillow. She doesn't use it as a bench pillow. She just uh, quilts it and binds it and then uses it as a wall hanging because it is what fits in um, her house and where in the area that she likes to decorate in. So you can take um, our project this month and you guys can do that as a wall hanging or you can turn it into a pillow. It really can be either way. Um, it will be your decision. So let's take a look at what is in your project this month. So we are going to start with a whole bunch of little squares of fabric. So you have some creams, you have yellows, you have reds, and you have greens. We do have binding. We have... That's really interesting. We have um, <laughs> some brown fabric here. Then we also have some green fabric here. We have some Wonder Under. All right, so as those of you that's just uh, like steam a seam, we use Wonder Under because it is lightweight. One side is bumpy, so that is the side that you will uh, fuse on first. The other side is the release paper, so once it's fused on, that's what you will peel off. Then we have um, some cream fabrics. We have batting. And we have a wood dowel. And we have taken that and turned that in to an apple wall hanging for fall. Um, I love this project. I say that all the time and I really do love the projects that we do. So this is, we're going into apple season. Um, we're also going into fall, but we wanted to do something that wasn't necessarily fall leaves. We've done a lot of that. So we've got three different colors of apples. Um, three of them are sliced open. This has a background, a backing. We gave you instructions to do um, some corner pockets for your dowel. You could also turn this in to a pillow. Um, so this would be a 12 inch pillow. There is enough of your background fabric to do that. Okay. Um, one thing I do want to let you know is that on your pattern, we're going to go through that in your breakfast club kit, you received a pattern, but it does not have the, um, it does not have the templates for the apples. Don't worry, when Breakfast Club is over, it is either being or has already been, oh, Marissa said it is already sent. We emailed you guys your templates so you can make your project today should you choose. Or, or just so you know, we also mailed you yesterday a hard copy of that. We realized that it did not print double-sided like it normally does, so we did send you a hard copy of it. Um, because we always give you a full pattern, but we did send you a um, 
PDF of it. So if you wanted to get going on it today. So we're going to talk about this project here really quick. So this is just kind of like for, um, raw edge applique with some free motion scribble quilting. I'm going to do a demo on it. Those of you that know me, I'm a long armor. And so normally this is something I would do on my long arm. Um, I did not do it. I sat down at the sewing machine because I said, you know what? We want everybody else to do this. So I should be able to do it too. So I'm going to do a little demo of how um, easy it is. You do see a lot of projects out there. Cotton Street Commons is one of them. So my friend Marcia does a lot of this scribble um, raw edge applique. And as long as you do two um, rounds, you can even do three if you want. It looks like that's what it is meant to be, which in reality is what it is. If you only go around once is when it looks like maybe you're not very good at it and you don't know what you're doing. So you need to go around your applique uh, twice. With that being said, all you're going to do is you're going to trace your apples, your stems, your leaves. You're going to place them on there. However, as I was working on this project, I would suggest to you to go ahead and quilt your background, not with your backing on there. Um, so that is an option to you to go ahead and quilt your uh, background however you want. Straight lines, cross hatching, throw this on your embroidery machine. Um, we typically quilt our projects. This one I did not. And then as I went back, we didn't put it in our instruction. So it's just something that you have that option to do. You're just going to fuse your apples on, put your stems behind before you fuse them and then add in your stems. Now we did three apples that are sliced open, so they have some apple seeds on there. I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and what I did is I just took and fused on two apples here. So I'm just gonna show you how easy um, it really is to, uh, to achieve this uh, look here. So we'll head over to the machine. All right, so I'm just going to come in here, and so I just have black thread in there. Let me just get my foot pedal here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down. Now you can bring your thread up and all that. This is a 12-inch project, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to lock stitch that in. So I'm just going to come here and do this vein. So I just went down and back, and then I'm just going to kind of go around. You don't need to stay on the line. You can go kind of around it. It does not have to look perfect. Now, when I come here, so you can see, all I did is just quickly, quickly did some scribble quilting on there. So we'll put that needle back down. I'll lock it off. Now, I'll go ahead and do this whole stem first, okay? Oops, came unthreaded. I'll do the stem both rounds and then I won't have to cut my thread again. I can just go right in and I can go right in here and just go around and do both of them there. Then I'm just going to just keep just kind of follow this. You can go on, you can go off. There's no right or wrong. It's scribble free motion, raw edge applique. So I'm just gonna do just that second line around and it is gonna be held down and we look great. So coming over here to my next one, I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna lock that in place. So let's do the stem or the leaf. So I'm gonna go around there twice. I'll cut that thread. I'll come right here and just grab this stem. I didn't fuse that very well. And then I can just go right in here and I can do this outside of this apple. Guys, once again, I am not a free motion quilter unless I'm on my long arm moving the long arm. So I can do this so you guys can too. Then all I did is come down to kind of give that apple a little bit of dimension. Then I came in and then I gave it a couple of seeds. And that is really all that there is 
to doing some quick free motion um, applique. So easy peasy, not difficult to do, um, and there's only nine apples. So you guys can sit down. You saw how fast I did this. Um, I didn't practice it. When I say I didn't practice it, I drew one apple when I got ready to do the project and I did it really quick and I said, I, the more I try, the more I'm going to think about it. So just sit down and do it. Um, you really can quilt all of those apples in about 20 minutes. So you guys have your choice there if you want to turn it into a pillow or keep it as a uh, wall hanging. So whichever direction you want to go is what you can do. All right, so we have, I have no luck with steam a seam. What am I doing wrong? You know, I am not, so I don't want to talk bad about any products. I'm just not a huge steam a seam person. I always feel it's really uh, much heavier. So Joy, I use um, um, Pelon 805, which is wonder under. It's a lot uh, lighter weight. Um, so it could be that you're not fusing it down enough, or it could be that you're over fusing it, or it could be sometimes even that it's an older steam -a seam and so maybe the glue just is not as uh, good. Let me look here. Um, God, you guys like the project. Um, oh, Joy Lynch. So guys, when we finish um, recording Breakfast Club today, this will go on. Uh, Joy put a link in the comment here for um, that bib. Thank you for doing that, uh, Joy. We um, uh, we appreciate that. Oh, Joy also said that the Christmas sweaters would be cute for those uh, like small fabric uh, gift bags that we've done. So I think that that is um, good. Oh, you meant the wonder under. You know what? We never sent it with the instructions. I never thought about that. We will uh, post the graphic in the comment sections um, for using the wonder under. I'm not sure why you have a problem on that joy. I never have a problem with it. I use it for my um, embroidered applique. I use it almost every day. So I'm not sure, but we can post um, the uh, wonder under uh, graphic and instructions in the comment section after we finish it. So as you know, we give away a breakfast club um, or a gift certificate, depending on if you are a member or not, for um, purchasing breakfast clubs. So those of you that purchase a kit, uh, Amy, do we have any kits left? Four. We have four kits left. You cannot purchase them online. It is Saturday, so once it hits Saturday, Breakfast Club is no longer available. Should you want a kit after 1030, just give us a call at the shop um, and you can claim one of the four um, remaining or just say you want one of the four and then Amy can call you uh, after we get the store open today. So the winner for Breakfast Club is? Diana Brown. Diane Brown. Diane Brown. So congratulations, Diane. Um, I think you're on Breakfast Club membership, so regardless, uh, either way, you'll get a Breakfast Club or a gift certificate from Amy. She um, will get that out for you. And then our winner today for um, Breakfast Club, excuse me, Breakfast Club Show and Tell is Tommy Josephson. So congratulations, Tommy. Uh, Amy will email you over a gift certificate. You'll be able to use that either online or when we see you um, in a few weeks for our um, I Love Paper Piecing Fall Retreat. So we do have that coming up um, with uh, Patsy Carpenter, Certified Instructor with QuiltWorks. For those of you that are new, we are ho having a four-day retreat off-site. Um, food, sewing, instruction, all of that. So you can get that information on the website. Additionally, we are looking at four new venues next week that we will, um, that we are looking at for some upcoming uh, retreats that we are wanting to do. So we are checking out a couple of other options here. So I'm excited about seeing those next week. Thank you guys for joining us. Make sure you get your Christmas and Halloween fabric soon because when it is gone, they are one-time printing and it is out of here. Thank you for spending part of your Saturday morning with us. Our next Breakfast Club, Marissa is going to put that graphic up for us. Um, it is um, on, I don't even remember the date. You don't have that it's one. right there. If it's in June. Oh, I put the wrong one up. <laughs> Ignore that. She's going to take it off. 
Breakfast Club is <laughs> obviously I did that one wrong. Um, interesting. Hmm. I'm gonna have to go look at how I sent September that over. September seventeenth. September seventeenth. So I apologize. So September seventeenth is our next Breakfast Club. If you're already um, have a kit, you know you'll get one. You still have time to sign up for one. Have a great day, everybody, and we will see you either in the shop, online, at Tipsy Tuesday, one of our sales, whatever it shall be. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you.